to place my talk within uh, the right context, uh, I will start with a brief introduction to the Matter project, the Air Phygian project which many or at least some of you might have already heard about, I think. Um, it will not be anything new if I say that one of the main limitations of the modern biology is our limited knowledge about, generally speaking, life on Earth and the complex web of interactions between the various organisms that build the biosphere. It is estimated that there are about 15 million eukaryotic species on our planet, and among these, only about 1.8 million have been taxonomically classified and named. Among the named species, less than half percent have had their genome sequenced, and among the sequenced genomes, less than 10% is of high enough quality to be used in comprehensive factional and evolutionary studies. So here comes the Area for Genome Project led by Professor Harris Lewin and his international team of scientists. The project has a rather simple and straightforward goal of sequencing the genomes of all 1.8 million named species within the next 10 years. The Air Biogenome Project founders assume that we have the technology, we have the manpower, and we have the expertise to do it. But we also have the urgency to do it because we may be living through the sixth mass extinction event and 1 million species could become extinct by the end of the 21st century if nothing is done to change the observed trends. And with every extinct species, we lose millions of years of evolutionary history and first-hand information written in those species' genes and genomes about life on Earth. So um, interestingly, it is estimated that the total cost of the Air Biogenome Project may be lower than that of the Human Genome Project, that largely due to uh, recent advancement in technology. And it is not difficult to imagine that the practical long-term gains for humanity and the benefits to the planet obtained through the Air Phygian project will be of unimaginable and greater value than those returned by any other genomic project or rather any other project ever. As the founders explained, the Air Phygian project is the confederated international network of networks that has the common goal of sequencing and annotating genomes of all now known eukaryotic species. There are currently uh, 49 Air Phygian affiliate projects that focus on sequencing the genomes of eukaryotic uh, species, either within a certain geographic region or habitat or within a certain taxonomic group. And one of these uh, projects is the African Biogenome Project. The idea of the African Biogenome Project was born a few years ago, uh, just after the Air Biogenome Project was started. It was initiated by a small group of African and Africa affiliated scientists who recognized the importance of including African researchers and communities in the genomics revolution that will be fueled by the further technological developments and the coordinated efforts made by the Air Biogenome Project scientists. Unfortunately, due to many complexities and challenges specific to the African terrain, Africa and African scientists have been left behind in the past when it comes to some more significant scientific breakthroughs. Uh, for example, the first human genome that cost about 3 billion US dollars at the time provided direct economic gains of more than 100 billion US dollars and indirectly generated additional $265 billion per year across the United States. The gains to Africa, however, were nearly non-existent as Africans were not involved in that study, neither as scientists nor as uh, study subjects. As a more recent example, African scientists uh, are also heavily underrepresented in the funded COVID-19 projects. Because most of the genetic and genomic studies using African samples are run outside Africa, the continent's priorities are often overlooked and long lasting capacity building across Africa is not happening. Every year up to 30% of African scientists leave Africa and many of those who stay are forced to drop their scientific careers. Uh, the lack of adequate infrastructure and management support often means that talented young scientists will never have a chance to fully develop the research potential. 
Due to that, the continent loses highly trained people who are critical for scientific and technological advancement and economic development. And without these people, the necessary infrastructure and strong management cannot be built. Genomics has already revolutionized biology, agriculture, and medicine. And let's not forget all that with only less than half percent of the eukaryotic species sequenced. Genomics-based technologies and innovations could alleviate and eventually solve many key problems Africa is face facing, including uh, biodiversity loss, food insecurity, and economic and technological impasse. And these problems will only be exacerbated by the progressing climate change, rapid human population growth, and political instability of many African countries. So this moment in history is a true chance for African scientists to take the initiative, despite the many challenges, and break this vicious circle that keeps increasing the technological, economic, and social gap between Africa and the global north. Therefore, the overarching goal of the African Biogenome Project is to sequence the genomes of eukaryotic species native to Africa while, while building environmental, agricultural, and biotechnological capacity in the continent within a 10-year framework. But this needs to be done differently than usual. Why we are uh, happy to receive any help we can from our international partners and collaborators we do not want the so-called helicopter research in which foreign scientists take samples and data from local communities and then return to their home institutions outside Africa. This needs to be an Africa-led effort. That means that both African scientists and African governments must mobilize their resources and be meaningfully involved in this project, in this project at all its stages. Uh, while we aim to follow all standards established by the Air Biogenome Project, we also realize that the African Biogenome Project may at times require different approaches and region-specific guidelines and solutions. So we believe that Africa PP really is a huge, bold, and potentially truly transformative endeavor, which has a real chance to meaningfully support the autonomy, sustainable growth, and long-term well-being of African communities. And of course, similarly large and ambitious initiative would be challenging any in, anywhere in the world. And unsurprisingly, it is particularly challenging in Africa, where the development of the genomics and bioinformatics platforms is still lagging behind that of other global regions. But there really is no better time than now to start making this effort. As I mentioned uh, before, the idea to start Africa BP was born some time ago with the official start of the planning marked by the African Biogenome Workshop held in October 2020. Several months later, in June 2021, we had the Africa BP kickoff meeting. And soon after the new, so after that, oh, sorry about that. Okay, something is not working, but I, I hope we can bear with me. <laughs> so soon after that, uh, we onboarded our pilot committee members and the pilot phase started. So um, everything I will now talk about uh, happened roughly within the last nine months. Uh, the Africa BP pilot phase or Africa BP pilot project will last three years during which we hope to sequence the genomes of about 2,500 species. So before I uh, move forward, let me introduce the people behind this idea and the Africa BP structure. Currently, uh, the Africa BP steering committee has 12 active members and is led by Professor Anne Muigai, who is here with us. Uh, she is from the Yowo Kenyatta University of Agriculture and Technology in Kenya. Uh, you may also know Tengo Debenizer, who is the Africa BP founding father and who has been a real driving force behind this project since its very beginning. Apart from the steering committee, the African Biogenome Project is supported by Science and Technology Committee, Monitoring and Evaluation Committee, Advisory Board, Regional Coordinators, National Notes, and the Pilot Project Committee. Now, uh, what is the Africa BP pilot project and what 
do we expect to achieve by launching the pilot projects first? As with any such initiative, we need to test the water first. This has never been done before, and there are some inherent risks we need to consider, assess, and find solutions for should those risks become real issues. Apart from the risks, this puzzle has a, a whole lot of pieces we need to assemble. Therefore, the primary goal of the pilot, which is our small scale implementation of the proposed ideas and solutions, is to prove the viability of the different concepts that the main project will be built upon. So we expect that the pilot will enable the risk management and identify any shortfalls before the more substantial resources can be committed. It will test the proposed procedures and benefits. It will confirm scalability. It will provide the deliverables that are necessary for the main project. And these deliverables will include carefully written and revised terms of reference, benefit assessments, viability reports and recommendations, roadmap for implementation, and a more detailed and revised project budget. As I mentioned before, the pilot committee was called to life about nine months ago and is now composed of, nine, uh, of eight subcommittees. Uh, the subcommittees have different, though naturally overlapping tasks, and the members collaborate within and between the subcommittees to solve the different issues the pilot is facing and to reach the agenda's objectives. The pilot committee is also assisted by the pilot support team who are ready to contribute their time and energy to the subcommittee that at a given moment uh, requires more hands on deck. Because of the nature of this project, um, in these initial stages of the pilot committee activity, some of the subcommittees are busier than others. So this talk uh, naturally will also focus more on the issues that at this initial stage need to be resolved first. But there is uh, much more, of course, I could be talking about today. And I suppose that after this presentation, we will still have a chance to get back to any interesting details I may have omitted. Uh, so the pilot has the chair and two coaches or vice chairs, and these are uh, myself, Zara, and Sadik. At the moment, the pilot committee has nearly 150 members who either come from or are currently based in 45 countries, which includes 22 African countries. Uh, however, these numbers are fluctuating as we keep on boarding new members. And um, it is worth saying, I think, that at least 60% of the current committee members are young people, early career scientists, and even graduate students. I guess this reflects well uh, the African demographics, but it's also an enormous opportunity for these uh, young, quickly learning, and very enthusiastic individuals to develop skills and uh, worldwide networks of potential mentors and collaborators. So one of the subcommittees that is now in the spotlight is the Sample Collection and Processing Subcommittee led by Verena Katalin Joseph. Uh, I think the name of the subcommittee uh, must be self-explanatory. Um, and indeed this subcommittee is, is responsible for species and specimen sourcing. This is not a small feat, as you can imagine, and to make sure we have the critical mass of experts and stakeholders involved in the planned actions, this subcommittee includes taxonomic working groups, which will unite taxonomists interested in the research on different groups of eukaryotes. These scientists do not need to be genomics experts, but it is essential that the diverse taxonomic expertise is at hand because of course, the scientific value of the genomes of unidentified or misidentified organisms will be limited. We collaborate with the so-called sample ambassadors or sample custodians whose task is to localize the targeted species and assist in sample acquisition. We have also identified or are in the process of identifying and engaging the national representatives these individuals have knowledge about the legal context and regulations related to the sample collection and possible shipment abroad, 
um, as especially at the beginning of the project, in many cases, the collected um, uh, samples will have to be shipped abroad because not all African countries right now have uh, suitable wet labs and sequencing facilities. Our uh, sample collection and processing subcommittee works closely with ELSI, which is the Ethics, Legal and Social Issues Subcommittee, led by Sally, Justin and Marsha. It is easy to imagine that the efficient acquisition of all necessary and country specific permissions will be key to overcome one of the major bottlenecks this project may encounter. However, it is also essential to ensure that whatever this project does is done responsibly and ethically, and that whatever we achieve will benefit not only the direct project participants, but especially the local communities and all African countries. Therefore, we will always strive to be as inclusive as possible. We are also very much aware of complex issues around access to the so-called digital sequence information, and we recognize the need for a balanced approach that would protect both the openness of the generated data and the rights of different nations and communities to use the local natural resources. For this reason, Africa BP became one of the signatories to the DSI Network Open Letter, published uh, about one week ago. Uh, among others, this letter highlights the importance of giving the scientists a voice when discussing the national and regional laws regulations to avoid mistakes made when the Nagoya Protocol was designed and implemented. What it means is that we want to make sure developing countries will not be negatively affected by the regulations that were supposed to protect their interests. Another uh, subcommittee whose members had hands full of work in the last few months was the Communication and Public Affairs Subcommittee led by Fabala Fatu and Samuel. In October 2021, we launched the Africa BP website, which is the fruit of collaboration between Africa BP members and Incova Biotech, an African genomics company uh, with offices and labs in several African countries who generously offered to sponsor the website production and its long-term maintenance. We are indeed very grateful for that. The website is uh, of enormous help to us. Uh, the Africa BP, is now also on social media and other online networking platforms. So please follow us and stay tuned for updates. Africa BP is a highly collaborative effort and we are open for new partnerships with both within Africa and between Africa and other continents. This is being taken care of by our partnership and fundraising subcommittee led by Charlotte, Harry and Charles whose task is to provide a suitable and mutually beneficial framework of engagement for Africa BP and its partners. The Africa BP partners include affiliated projects as well as institutional corporate and corporate partners. And I apologize because this uh, slides uh, live their own life, uh, but I still hope you can follow this presentation. Uh, so, um, at the moment, we have uh, six associated project partners, 20 institutional partners, and four corporate partners. However, this is again a quickly changing light landscape as conversations are being conducted with dozens of other potential partners as we speak. Uh, in fact, this slide uh, does not yet include institutions and uh, companies that joined us within the last few days. So Africa BP is a large regional project. But the most fundamental questions about the evolution and biology of eukaryotic life and life in general cannot be answered by regional initiatives. And we recognize the need and express our willingness to collaborate with other genomic projects worldwide. Among others, we are collaborating with the vertebrate genome project whose goal is to unveil the chromosomal gene evolution in vertebrates. We have identified the potential sample custodians of the first 18 vertebrate species nominated by BGP, obtained the necessary permissions to sample and transfer the collected samples to one of the African sequencing centers, and are now ready to start obtaining some data. Uh, in fact, 
uh, three vertebrate species genomes that will contribute to the vertebrate genome project have just been sequenced in South Africa. Uh, within the next two years, uh, a total of about 500 vertebrate species is planned to be sequenced in Africa or in close collaboration with African scientists. Uh, similarly, we are also in the midst of discussions with the 10KP project that aims to sequence over 10,000 genomes representing every major clade of plants and eukaryotic microbes. Naturally, some of those organisms also live in Africa. Uh, at the beginning of this presentation, I, to I told you that we would like to sequence about 2,500 African species. So how are we going to choose which species should be sequenced? Should be sequenced first because uh, the final goal is actually to sequence all of the species. So this is, this is only for the pilot. To make sure um, the pilot product achieves its goals and provide the des desired deliverables, which are not so much the genomes at this stage, but the viability assessment, risk management, revised action plan, pipelines and structures, to make sure this is achieved, we need a sufficiently diverse pool of samples that should include organisms provided by different countries across taxonomy groups and habitats. So yes, we are also interested in marine species. More importantly, however, we would like community input into which African species should be sequenced first. That's why we have created the call for 2,500 priority species. This call has been out there uh, since October. Uh, it's still open and we would love to hear from you as well. We have about 300 species right now, so there's, there's a lot of space for more species. Uh, the ideal candidate for this list was, would be a species that's either ecologically, economically, culturally, or scientifically important. So it can be an iconic species, threatened or endangered species, or species that's poorly known. We don't want to make these decisions on our own. We would like the African scientists and community members to tell us what species are particularly important to them and why. So please go to the Africa Wiki website or social media and look for this call. Uh, the implementation testing during the pilot phase will of course involve the creation of a roadmap for the genome sequencing annotation, but also its interpretation. We would like all that to happen in Africa. And one of the objectives is to have at least 80% of the African genomes sequenced in Africa. Ideally, by the end of the main project, there will be at least one genome sequence for each of the African countries. This would be uh, indeed a wonderful uh, situation. But the object objective for the pilot is to have at least one species sequenced from all five African regions. And if possible, the number of sequenced genomes should be evenly distributed among the regions, but we will see how this goes. As this is not only a scientific, but also a social scientific project where capacity building in Africa is at least as important as high quality genomes, one of the more recent initiatives within Africa VP is the Africa VP Open Institute, whose goal is to make sure that Africa BP not only produces data, but also trains people who will be able to make use of this data and in the future will train the next generation of bioinformaticians and genomic scientists. So among other activities and tasks, the Open Institute will create training opportunities for Africans, will design and coordinate knowledge exchange programs, and eventually will also sponsor around 600 fellowships for early career scientists. These researchers will uh, collaborate closely with Africa BP's international partners, uh, such as, uh, for example, the Welcome Sanger Institute in the UK, but they will be based in Africa and will have a chance to transfer the new skills and knowledge to their colleagues and students on the continent. All right, uh, so the big question is, of course, how much will it cost? And we estimate that producing high quality reference genomes for around 100,000 African species will cost around $870 million. 
and that includes both sequencing as well as data management and analysis. We came up with the sum using the average genome size for plants and animals and an average cost per species per gigabase, taking into account prices in Africa. The cost of sample collection, including permits, consultations, and workshops should be around $41 million. And last but not least, around $90 million will be needed for the previously mentioned fellowships. So in total, we will need around $1 billion over a 10 year period. And this may sound like a lot of money. However, we are certain that this initiative will, and this investment in this initiative will be dwarfed by the economic, social and ecological payoffs that will stem from discoveries and follow up projects that Africa PP will enable. And it is essential that this core funding comes from the African institutes and governments. So you have already seen this slide, but uh, this is a pure coincidence. In fact, the original publication date was different, but our long awaited position paper will be published today, within minutes now, I think, in Nature. Uh, naturally, we are all very excited about that. It's been a lot of work uh, to have it out. And um, I put the articles URL here, although of course you cannot click it. You could probably um, take a picture of it and then type it, but I guess it's going to be way easier to just Google uh, that paper or check the Africa Wiki website for updates. So uh, this article is, is the counter article and it's basically our appeal to the African institutions, policymakers and governments to consider and support this project for the better future of the African genomics, biotechnology, conservation, and science and innovation in general. And we especially hope for meaningful support from the African Union Commission and the African Academy of Sciences. So uh, when you see the paper, please share it widely and spread the word. That's it, that's the end of my talk. Let me just add that this project is already supported by uh, very many individuals, institutes and companies from the continent and from beyond. And we are very grateful for all this fantastic enthusiasm and help, which we keep receiving in many different forms. Currently, our all Africa BP members are volunteers who are donating their precious time, energy, knowledge, and skills. Many of these volunteers are available every day, every day and night if necessary. And there is no question that without their contributions, uh, the progress we have already made would not be possible. That's, that's the end. And I apologize again for uh, the slides that I didn't really want to collaborate. <laughs>